Hi everyone, Ben Newton from Macro Connect here with a quick tutorial video on how to get started with lesson number one in the Code to Compose student facing curriculum. Uh, so, lesson number one focuses on two of the most important commands in sort of wrestling with the basics of Sonic Pi. Those commands are the play command and sleep command. Now, these are very common concepts in the musical world. Um, so depending on your background, play is pretty much the equivalent of walking up to a piano and putting one finger out and hitting a key on a piano, um, playing a single note. Now this is the building block to melody, harmony, chords, everything. So in order to get to those concepts, we need to learn how to play notes first. The second command that we're going to be learning is called sleep. That sleep is essentially akin to the the word rest in music. Um, however, it's not always used like a rest. It denotes the amount of time in between uh, play notes as they're playing, or it can um, help us determine how long or short we want something to play for. But um, more on that later. So, first things first, open Sonic Pi. And in an empty buffer, like one that I have here, we're just going to experiment with the first and easy command here of play. So you may get, have guessed it, in order to play a note we write the word play and then there's two different ways to um, to get a note to play. So the first way I'm going to show you is called using MIDI notation. Now um, MIDI um, is something you can look up on your own here but essentially just know that um, in Sonic Pi there is a range of numbers so um, starting at play one which you can barely hear because the bass is so low and um, I'm not sure what the actual um, highest register on Sonic Pi is for, for notes here but I just did 127 and it sounded pretty pretty high you go up to 200 and you can't hear anything at all which I don't think it's playing so the point being um, pick a number 60 I believe is like middle C on a piano 20 is more of a low bassy note there and 100 is going to be kind of piercing it's going to hurt your ears so the way i envision it think of a piano uh, the lower the number further left on the keyboard uh, the higher the number further to the right so these numbers correspond directly to note names so if you are in less of a technology focused or leading course and let's say you're using code to compose in you know as a supplement to your band orchestra or like choir class um, and your students know some basic music theory or just uh, anything about music in general, you can use actual note names. So A through G, obviously note names. You can use uh, sharps and flats in here. We won't get to that today. It's not important. Um, but just know that you write, have students write play, colon. And I'll use C for, it's a really common example. We'll hit run. What you hear there is a C being played. Now you may have guessed it. C5 is simply one octave higher than the C4. C3, one octave lower. So, um, two different ways to do it. We can use these note, uh, actual note names with an octave identifier, or we can do the MIDI notation alternative. Now notice, these two things sound exactly the same. Um, they're the same note, play 60 uh, is the exact same note as play C4. So, um, two different ways to get to the same result. Um, just in your first couple classes, probably stick to one. Um, just make sure students understand that there's different ways to do that. So our second important concept here is sleep. So as I mentioned before, you can think of sleep like a rest. So if I were to write play 40, play 20, play 52, um, this is what students will ultimately end up doing if they were to just experiment with this on their own, thinking that, okay, I want to play 60, then 40, then 20, then 52. Instead, it ends up sounding like a very strange chord, because all of these play notes are playing at the exact same time. There's no space in there uh, in our program. We have not instructed it to do so. This is where sleep comes in. So, play 60, we write the word sleep, space, and we put a number in there. So, important to realize is that um, I believe everything in Sonic Pi defaults to 60 beats per minute. So uh, when you say sleep one, you are s essentially telling this program to wait for one second in this case, or uh, as it turns out to be one beat in 60 beats per minute. So if we did this, now what we have is 
the 60 note played, waited one second or one beat, and then it played these following three notes. However, if we did sleep one, sleep one, well, let's switch it up. So now we have 60, sleep one, 41, 20, sleep 0 0.5, and play 52. So, um, pretty easy concept to illustrate to your students. Just know, um, the higher you make your sleep, can almost be equated to a time comparison. This is going to be exactly four seconds until we hear display 52. There it is. So, um, as long as you understand these concepts, you're going to be fully able to um, answer any questions that your students might have on the first day of teaching the Code to Compose curriculum. So again, um, this is Ben from Macro Connect. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Uh, my contact information is down below uh, underneath the video. Uh, happy teaching!